Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we see the topic of complex exponential signals. And now I've written the heading down to save me a little time in a second or two. And in that I will have a talk with you guys. And I need a suggestion, okay? In the previous videos I've already asked you about the suggestions of uh, about the camera. And you have not given me a, a very good response. So I need your comments, okay? Which camera is best? This one or... Uh, the digital logic design and electronics videos those are so those digital logic design and electronics those are recorded with this similar camera okay and on this signal system the new camera so you tell me which one is good okay so I will continue with that and now the other problem is that the summers are here and over here the, in my room the temperature is very high okay it is very hot in here so without the fans it is uh, very difficult to make a video so maybe from the next videos I start turning on the fan. Till now it's off. In the previous video it was on, I believe. In the one video of amplitude transform, time transformation video it was on. So that fan will now disturb the the, the audio quality. So if you have any suggestion for that, uh, any mic you would like to suggest or whatever it is, so uh, that uh, I get rid of the hotness as well and and this uh, audio is also clear. So so we should go sideways okay so you let me know so coming to the topic is complex exponential signal well the signal is generally written in this form x of p is equal to c and exponential of alpha t where c would be the amplitude fine so this signal is generally written as c alpha t now uh, this first we are seeing in the continuous time domain okay we also see this signal in the discrete time domain fine so now uh, these uh, well we, we, the c and a these are generally complex numbers okay they're generally complex numbers but over here we see them stepwise so let's say the first case is that both c and a are real numbers okay if c and this is alpha let's say alpha right if C and alpha are real numbers, so what would be the case? So if C and A alpha are real numbers, so this would be a real exponential signal in this case. This would be a real exponential signal in this particular case. And how is this? So I am coming to real exponential signal. Now. Um, let's let the c to one side okay alpha so depending on alpha now we have alpha as a real number so if alpha is a real number it can either be greater than zero or it could be less than zero alpha could either be greater than zero or alpha could be less than zero so if alpha is greater than zero this is the case of a rising exponential signal this is the case of a rising exponential signal and you know these things, right? And when alpha is less than zero, which means exponential of negative t, so this is a case of a decaying exponential signal. Isn't it so? Then I will try it over here. So let's say I draw it over here. If this is your uh, exponential to the power alpha t, so this is the graph for it. Somewhat like this, isn't it so? And when this alpha is less than zero, if this is the time axis, which means the function is exponential of negative alpha t, so this is the graph of it. Now, what is this c? So c is the value of the function at t is equal to zero, or you can say that this is the y intercept of the function. What is this c? C is value of function at t is equal to 0 or you can say the y intercept now if this alpha is greater than 0 if this alpha could be less than 0 so this alpha could also be equal to 0 so depending on that we have the third classification over here if alpha is equal to 0 so the function is a constant function x of t is equal to c which means this is a constant function and which you can draw for yourselves and let me draw it over here 
if this is the time axis, so this would be the value of c, and this is exponential to the power of zero. c times exponential to the power of zero, right? Now, if the value of c is 1, if you're talking about unit exponential signals, so over here, if alpha is greater than 0, the value of c would be 1. If alpha is less than 0 for the decaying signal, c would be equal to 1. And similarly, if, if alpha is equal to 0, so the, this would be a constant signal with value equal to 1. That is in case you're talking about unit exponential signal. I'm not talking about unit exponentials. I talked about the value of c. Is that okay? Now, uh... So from this we can say that constant signal is a, a special case of the complex exponential signal, right? Now the second is, the second case, let's say the magnitude is equal to 1. Let's say the magnitude of the function, you know, the amplitude of the function is equal to 1 and alpha is a pure imaginary number. And alpha is purely imaginary. Which means that alpha is of the form what? Alpha is of the form j omega naught. Fine? Yes. So which means what would happen is that x of t in this case would equal 1 times exponential of j omega naught t. Isn't it so? So I'm taking the help from my notes and my book over here because I find this uh, topic a little confusing. So this is a, now this is a complex exponential function. That was a real exponential signal. This one now is a complex exponential signal. And the complex exponential signals, note a point that these are always periodic signals. In the continuous time domain, right? They are always periodic in the continuous time domain. When we talk about the discrete time, we will talk over there. For now, they are always periodic. Is that fine? Now, it is very much similar to a sinusoidal signal, right? Why? Because you know from the Euler's theorem, okay? And how are they periodic? How are they periodic? So that we've seen that in the previous videos while we were deriving the fundamental period relationship, but we see it again over here. So if you say why periodic? Why? So, so we know that for the periodic signal what happens is that x of t it would equal to x of t plus the capital T naught. So if I put it over here that we have x of t plus t naught equaling what? Exponential of j omega naught t plus t naught which is equal to exponential of j omega naught t into exponential of j omega naught t naught isn't it so so this is x of t plus t naught so for periodic signal the x of t should be equal to x of t plus t naught so which means that for for periodic over here i would say that exponential of j omega naught t this is equal to exponential of j omega naught t into exponential of j omega naught t naught so this cancels out with this one and this implies what? That you have that exponential of j omega naught t naught is equal to 1. And this is only true if omega naught t naught is equal to 2 pi. Only true if omega naught t naught is equal to 2 pi. And where did this come from? So this comes from the Euler's theorem. This comes from the Euler's theorem. And what do we have the Euler's theorem? We have that exponential of jx is equal to cos of x plus j sine of x. So over here we have uh, x would be equal to uh, what? 2 pi. So if you have exponential of j to the power exponential of j 2 pi, this is equal to cos of 2 pi plus j sine of 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi would give you a 0, cos of 2 pi would give you a 1. And now this is not only equal to 2 pi, this would equal to 2k pi, which means integral multiples of 2 pi. Integral multiples of 2 pi. So you include over here the k pi as well. You include over here the k pi as well. You include over here the k as well. So now it will give you exponential to the power j 2k pi 
is equal to what? Is that fine? It is. So this is the case. Omega naught t naught is equal to 2k pi. So from here I get right the, uh, th this we derive, right? So this we derive the fundamental period as 2k pi upon omega naught. This is the period, okay? This is any general period t is equal to 2k pi by t naught. For for fundamental, for fundamental you put k is equal to 1. For fundamental k is equal to 1, right? Now these signals, these signals, so let me remove uh, the case number one part. So now this signal, this exponential of j 2 k pi. So this is not a single signal, okay? Exponential j 2 k pi. Well, exponential of j2 pi is a single signal, is a single signal, but exponential of j2k pi is not a single signal. These are a number of multiple signals depending on the value of k, because k is an integer value, 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, so on. So these are an infinite number of signals, and these signals are what? These are harmonically related signals. These are called as harmonically related exponential signals now why are these called so harmonically related exponential signals because they have at least one period common because they have at least one period common so I would write it over here they have one period and let's say the fundamental is uh, one period common okay leave the fundamental for now the fundamental periods are not the same but they have one period that is common okay so let's say let's say i say for k is equal to zero now and these harmonically related exponential signals differ on the basis of the value of k so now let's say if k is equal to zero so we have exponential of uh, exponential of zero so we have a constant signal, right? Exponential of 0 is equal to 1, we have a constant signal. And for this what would happen is that uh, the frequency would be 0, right? And the time period would be undefined. Isn't it so? It is. Similarly, if you have now the k value of k equal to 1, so it would be exponential of j to pi. And for this, what will happen? The frequency would be what? It's uh, uh, 2 pi, right? The frequency is 2 mega. Uh, the frequency is omega naught. The frequency is omega naught. And, and the time period, it would be it would be d naught. It would be d naught, right? But now, if the value of k is equal to 2, if the value of k is equal to 2, which means if you have exponential of j 4 pi, so in this case, now the frequency will get double. So the frequency is doubled, which is 2 mega naught, and the time period is equal to t naught divided by 2. In this case, if you increase, you will have a, 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 a period at some case, at some point, which will be equal to t naught. Which means at some particular point t not is the period of this function, but it is not the fundamental period. The fundamental period is t not divided by 2. So what you have for every signal, every signal for every value of k will be a new signal. Every signal for every value of k will be a new signal, but have one period t not in common. For every value of k, you have a new signal, right? But all of them, all of them would have one period that is T naught in common. And I hope this point is clear. T naught would not be its fundamental period for all of them, but it would be common to all of them, at least one period. To the last case, if both of them are purely complex. 
Well, it's really hot here, and you can see me sweating and losing my stamina also. But no problem. I will just make this one video and discreet time I will see if I make it later or tomorrow. Okay? For now, coming to the last case of it. If we have case number 3, if C and alpha are both imaginary, right? Are both complex, are complex. And what form do they take? So, so that form is that C is equal to the magnitude of C exponential of J theta. And A would be equal alpha, alpha. I always confuse it with alpha and A. So alpha is of the form R plus J omega naught. This is equal to R plus J omega naught. So now x of t would be 1, x of t this would equal, so value of c, c is this, so you have magnitude of c exponential of j theta, well one is in polar form and the other is in rectangular form, I believe you know polar and rectangular forms, ok, so this is the value of c, now you have exponential of alpha, alpha is this r plus j omega naught r plus j omega naught into t fine now now we simplify this right so the x of t would be equal to what x of t would be equal to uh, the the magnitude of c times exponential of uh, let's say I, I i open the brackets up so this is j theta into exponential of r t it would be and now we have the next is exponential of a j omega naught t. So now what would happen is that x of t would be equal to uh, the magnitude of c exponential of r t and then you have exponential of j is taken common and then you have theta plus omega naught t or you can say omega naught t plus theta. So have a look. Now this is a, uh, a what? A real exponential signal multiplied with an imaginary. So it will give you now a complex one. So let's say I check it over here. Wait a minute. Uh, what was the form? Exponential of j omega naught t, right? So j omega naught t was uh, the complex one. This is a a real one. So so let's say wait a minute. A real exponential signal multiplied with a periodic signal. So this is the real part of it. This is the real part of it, and then it is multiplied with the next part that is the complex part, or that is the periodic part that we saw over here. So that this, in this case, this x of t would be a complex number. Okay, this x of t is a complex quantity, and 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 the graph could not be shown in a 2D, okay? Well, I would try it in a 2D, but uh, it basically is a 3D. So it was exponential to the power RT over here, right? This is exponential to the power RT. Now this graph depends, everything depends on the value of R, okay? So you can have three possibilities depending on the value of R. The first is that R is equal to zero. If r is equal to 0, so in this case you would have a sinusoidal signal. You would have a sinusoidal signal and you know how to draw a sinusoidal signal and this is like this. Is that okay? Now the second case is that if r is greater than 0, so, so this would be an increasing sinusoid, right? If r is greater than 0, so this would be an increasing sinusoid, which means like this. Wait. First, I draw the reference axis. So this would be the case. This is for r greater than 0. 
Well, basically you are seeing this to be a sinusoidal wave, but this is not a sinusoidal wave. You draw it in your MATLAB in a 3D and, 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 there, and then you will see that this basically is in the form of a spiral form, okay? Like a spring. You, you, you use those registers, you have a spiral banding. So this is basically of that form with an increasing magnitude, okay? It is opening like it. These are circles, circles which are increasing and they are stretching. Circles which are increasing and are stretching outwards. And similarly, the third case is again in a similar way. If R is less than zero, so you have a decreasing magnitude of the of the sinusoidal signal. And this is again what we see it to be like this. Basically, basically what is the case that this is again a spiral sort of a form which is which is the greatest at its initial position and then it is decreasing, 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 decreasing and decaying to zero. So in 2D this seems in the books it would be written like this, it would be shown like this. You draw it in your MATLAB and that's all. It should be all okay because it is very hot in here and, and also the problem is done. Point. Harmonically related signals, we've seen it okay. Sinusoidal signals multiplied by decaying exponentials are commonly referred to as damped oscillations. These are damped oscillations. Well, you can see that these are sinusoidal signals multiplied with decaying oscillations. Because uh, first, uh, in the leftmost case, you have uh, the highest value, so you have the highest value, and then the exponential is decaying to zero, so the sinusoidal amplitude will also be decaying to zero. Similarly, this is the sinusoidal signal multiplied with a with rising exponential signal. So initially, the amplitude is almost zero, and then it is increasing, increasing to infinite. So that's all about it. I am feeling a little tired. I See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah, maybe with the same exponential signals in the discrete time domain. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And do give me your suggestions also, okay? On the mic, on the camera. Goodbye.